Now we all know that the 1 liter TSI is a very friendly car and it's all about the amount of peppiness that the block has and the amount of power that it can get out for the amount of displacement that it's got. But you would be absolutely astounded at the fact that this has three cylinders is the size of a carton box of like milk or a tetra pack and it still pushes out upwards of 170 bhp. is what happens when you take the 1 liter TSI engine to somewhere near its limit. The car in question today is a Polo GT TSI 1 liter with a stage 3 setup. Something that not a lot of people will do because of the cost of going stage 3 on this engine. But something that is actually an engineering marvel. The reason why you shouldn't be that confident in putting this much power in a car that is this small and has only front wheel drive is this. My traction is off and I'm just going to take it out for not even a launch. I'm just going to remove my foot from the brake and I press the accelerator all the way down. So let's see what's up. There's quite a lot of lag. spinning really quickly and really easily in first gear and second gear they start hooking up uh, by the time you hit 5000 rpm mind you this turbo spools pretty late uh, it it spools at around 4000 rpm and then you've got like 2000 rpm to play with so best believe your newfound power is very high up in the rev range but that does not mean it's not that does not mean it's not fun And once you are in that rev range, the revs do come up pretty quick. There's a small problem with the 1 litre TSI uh, in the Polo is that it comes with a non-DSG gearbox. It comes with a torque converter and that torque converter cannot be mapped for crispiness or any form of uh, better optimum shifting. So you need to do with the stock uh, setup that this TCU has but the other reason why this thing is not as snappy as you want it to be in terms of uh, in terms of shifting is because you definitely miss that DQ 200 or just a dual clutch gearbox Even using the paddle shifters on this uh, GTI steering wheel, it does not feel that involving just because of that slight delay that that stock TCU tune gives you. When it comes to uh, suspension and performance, this square chassis has always been one of our favorites in terms of handling. But the steering rack has a little bit of numbness and we have been very open about that. Plus. Uh, it is a very easy car to tame. It stays pretty flat in most of the corners, however hard you chuck it, even though you don't have uh, quite a lot of power. But that's the only good thing about this car is that it's so mod friendly that you can bring out pretty much 170, 180 bhp depending on your on your uh, on the aggression of your tune, and you can get yourself a car that is super peppy, very fun and a really nice first car to own. It's going to be pretty fast and it's not that it's not going to, you're not going to keep up with some of your sedan friends. So this is a really great build, but it does come with some problems. Now let's get into the performance figures and what this car does when it comes to the zero to a hundred and quarter mile timings. So these are the draggy times provided by Venom Performance and Wagmaster Chennai. And as you can see, 
pretty impressive timings for a 1 liter turbo 3 cylinder and if you recall these timings are actually faster than our stage 2 Lora TSI now according to the tuners and the people who have built the car these timings are actually not the full story the torque converter transmission is a very tricky gearbox to launch and definitely it can shave off a couple of tenths to the quarter mile and 0 to 100 sprint and this brings me to the gearbox the torque converter is the main limitation to the 1 liter TSI according to venom performance this same setup in a manual car would easily scrape the 200 bhp mark and produce even better timings how much better well that's something we can say once we get our hands on a 1 liter TSI manual stage 3 Given that we have had this polo body for, I don't know, over a decade in our country, best believe that the customization options for the exterior are endless. Everything from the hood, fender, side skirts, rear diffuser, spoiler, headlamps, tail lamps, everything. But it does not mean that you need to go all the way in order to get a perfect looking sporty hatchback. Now, this carbon steel grey car comes already with quite a lot of good looks and sporty looks from factory. but. The owner has done a lot of very thoughtful uh, mods in order to make it look that extra bit special. Like these Japanese racing JR28 rims on uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4s. He's got updated headlamps and he's got a rear diffuser. That's it. He's got MTS coilovers and this being one of the last cars to come out of the factory, this is a legend edition car so it's got a badging for it too. Now, talking about what's under the hood, as I mentioned before, this is a stage 3 setup, so it comes with an upgraded turbo. An upgraded turbo from RTMG and that is a Greek company that costs 2 lakh rupees for a single turbo. Now, it comes with a racing line air intake that costs 55,000 bucks and a turbo inlet from racing line itself that costs 15,500 rupees. He also has a custom downpipe and a custom mid exhaust all the way till the end and then he's got a DC Sports X Borla muffler in the end to make the car sound absolutely beautiful. It does sound like there are very few mods but the difference is immense. Coming to the price breakdown of the mods, well, it is a super long list, long enough to make this video at least 20 minutes long, so we will stick to the main performance oriented parts. Starting off, we have the custom downpipe with the resonator and the Borla muffler that cost a cool 60,000 rupees. The RTMG hybrid turbo costs 1.6 lakh rupees and the stage 3 tune from Venom Performance costs another 45,000 rupees. All of this power needs a good suspension setup so the MTS coilers cost 95,000 rupees and the JR28 rims cost 1.38 lakh rupees. Wrapped around the JR28s are PS4s which cost 44,000 bucks. The car also has a Brembo big brake kit and supporting mods like braided lines, pads and the rotors. All of that costs 78,000 rupees. To improve the handling even more, it gets white line anti-roll bars and adjustable end links which cost 33,000 rupees and 19,000 rupees respectively. It also has a maxi dot cluster which is 53,000 rupees and all of the other miscellaneous mods like the super expensive audio setup, diffuser, paddle shift steering and many many more things, all of that costs another 4,23,600 rupees. Combine all of what I just said and this polo build costs an eye-watering 11,45,600 rupees. Now, of course, all of these mods aren't necessary but it is absolutely bonkers as to how the Indian tuner market is shifting and how people are getting more and more comfortable spending big tickets on small cars. Epic. Now, having experienced this tiny little 998cc block and its stage 3 setup, I think that the phrase there's no replacement for displacement is slowly getting out of fashion. And if you think that 
polo videos are getting a little monotonous in our channel please give us a better car to film and we will be more than happy to oblige but after all the polo is exactly what it says on the badge a legend Huge shout out goes to Check Engines Hyderabad Venom Performance and Wagmaster Chennai for hooking us up with this polo build and letting us film in their premises. We've left all of their socials down in the description for you all to check them out. These guys put out some crazy projects and always welcome us to film their cars with open arms. This video wouldn't have been possible without them, so do make sure to give them a follow. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please hit like, subscribe to our channel to never miss out on any of our cool videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.